Hi there everyone, welcome back to the Royal Society here in London where head librarian Keith Moore has been down in the vaults once again and pulled up some wonderful instruments to show us today. Keith, what have you found? Now you know instantly what this is, Brady, because you've probably seen one in every hotel you've ever stayed in. That's a nice barometer. It's though. a nice one. This is an 18th century uh, uh, barometer. It doesn't work anymore, of course. The mercury's been taken out of it. So normally there would have been mercury down in the bulb here going up. That's right, yep. And you've got this little scale here, so you can just flip that over and see today it's going to be, ooh, rain by the look of it. Well, who's surprised in London, hey? There is a maker's name here, and it says Ramsden, London. Ramsden. And he is the man of the hour for today's video, isn't he? Well, Jesse Ramsden is one of the premier instrument makers of the 18th century. And he's very well known for making more and more accurate instruments, and particularly gradations of, of scale. He had an engine that would do that. And he started making great circle instruments, particularly for astronomical observations. He made them more accurate and more stable, so he kind of revolutionised astronomy. Keith, when you talk about these famous instrument makers like Ramsden and others that you've mentioned before, were they actually, you know, doing the stuff? Yeah, he, he would be doing the stuff, but he would also have apprentices, of course, because uh, it was a business, therefore the top-end scientific instruments he may have looked after himself, but for the more workaday stuff that he would sell in his shop, Obviously, he'd need a lot of makers for that. Ramsden was famous for being late. When General Roy needed instruments for uh, measuring the distance between London and Paris, he was famously late and delayed the project because he was such a perfectionist. Normally, Keith, here at the Royal Society, you have a big portrait of Ramsden that you could show us, like these ones we have on the wall here, but it's not here at the moment. It isn't. It's in the Science Museum uh, and it's standing and being exhibited next to his dividing engine. So it's a nice thing because the two instruments, the instrument and the instrument which you can see in the portrait, are kind of side by side there. So, so go and have a look at it. It's great. We're going to have to make do. It's a bit teeny, this one. <laughs> What's this, like a little engraving or something? Yeah, is that? that's right, from the main portrait. So there we go. We've got the little baby. And just so that we know that uh, Ramsden was making instruments for the Royal Society, we have a little list of them here in our council minutes. So this is at a meeting, and you can just read the date there, Brady. March the 10th, 1768, which, if memory serves correctly, was a Thursday, I believe. Oh, yes, yeah, 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 it was a ah, right, right, yes, okay. yeah, Very good, right? Okay. Yeah. This is minutes of a meeting. And why is this relevant to Ramsden, Keith? So council is the ruling body of the Royal Society, senior fellows who, who look after policy. And what they're doing here is just looking at instruments that they're going to send to Hudson's Bay. And it's for observations. And given the date, 1768, this is probably going to be for a transit of Venus observation. But the key thing here is that you've got a list of instruments that they're going to send over. So resolved that the instruments for the use of the observers at Hudson's Bay be the following. Mr. Ellicott's clock, two telescopes from Mr. Short and Mr. Dolan's micrometer, a stand for each telescope, a journeyman clock, so that's just a workaday clock by Mr. Shelton, an alarm clock, now with Mr. Elliot, and if we turn the page, yep. here we go. What's the top of the list there? Number six, a barometer bespoke of Mr. Ramsden. Was this the barometer? Was this the one that was taken to Hudson? We don't know. This looks more of a domestic one to me, but you never know. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Possible. All right. But this does show that Ramsden was the man and they were using his stuff. It was all right. That's right. OK. I think it's time to open the box, don't you? Well, yes, because this is quite a, quite a fine instrument. But let's just take a look at this. Oh, look at those lovely bows. Did you tie those? I didn't. No, the Science Museum tied those. Can you not do bows that nice? I, I, I can, but, you know. <laughs> You see it's instrument RS61, and we can see here the maker's name. This is Ramsden, London. Ramsden, London, and RS61 means this is item number 61 in the Royal Society's collection. So quite a low number. Yeah. That means it's old? That means it's old, yes. It's part of the original instrument collection. And you can see the very, very fine scale on this protractor. That's what it is. Here we have 360 degrees marked off by Jesse Ramsden. Wow. Can I hold it? Can I touch it? Yes, do. It weighs about what I expected. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's brass, so it's, but it's got a slim instrument. It's got a nice heft, and this still moves. You can still yeah. move it. And it's got like this little glass bit in the middle. You could put that over your center point. Mm. So you could place it on top of a map or something, and yep. you've got your 360 degrees on that. Yeah. 
That is a gorgeous piece of kit. I love it. It's a bit better than the protractors we used to have at school, I remember. Yeah, it is, it is a little bit. I, could, I can imagine if I turned up to school on the first day and pulled this out of my pencil case, it would have... That would be good. It would have made a stir. Gorgeous. Ramsden. Jesse Ramsden. Jesse Ramsden. Maker of fine instruments, including this protractor and that barometer. Yeah, I've got crosshairs and like a little... looks like an upside-down James pointing a camera at me. Of course, this would be mounted on a tripod originally. Yeah. You've got a few different gauges so you can measure your angles. All right. And you've got a compass attached to that as well. So the reason we're showing people this theodolite is not because of this one, but we want to show them basically the mother of all theodolites. That's right, which was acknowledged by George Adams in the book he wrote on instrumentation, his business. 